Praise the Lord, everybody. Um, Minister Alan Hollis from Greater Morning Star Apostolic Ministries and my pastor, Bishop Charles E. Johnson. And I'm honored and grateful to be here tonight and to minister on the behalf of Minister Bolden, who's been doing an outstanding job with the call to be different ministries. He's truly been blessed, a blessing to me. And I'm pretty sure he's been a blessing to many others. Um, you should check out his Instagram page, check out his Facebook page and follow because one thing that one of the apostles prayed is that they said, Father, make them one. And so one of the main things his goal is in his approach to ministry and what he does is to um, draw everybody together because uh, it's not about us. It's all about Jesus. And so we're grateful to him and I'm grateful for this opportunity. And I don't want to hold anyone hold your time tonight. But I do pray those all who come across this video of this Bible class tonight that you are blessed. Um, I just want to give a quick word of prayer um, before I get right into it and bow your heads if you're listening. Father, we just want to say thank you for your goodness and mercy and your love and kindness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for being good to us, Lord God, because you've been better to, us, better to us than we've been to ourselves, Lord God. We ask, Lord God, to bless the hearers, Lord God, of this word tonight, Lord God. Let it, Lord God, rest in their hearts, Lord God. Help them, Lord God, to have a mind of repentance, Lord God. Help somebody, Lord God, who comes across this, Lord God, have their faith increased in you. And overall, Lord God, we ask, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, let someone ask, Lord, what must they do to be saved, Lord God? Prick the hearts and minds of sinner, Lord God, for faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Those of you, I see some people coming in. Um, blessings to you all. Of course, I don't have time to really go through every single person who uh, comes in, but um, I don't want to try to hold too much of, of your time. I told uh, Minister Bolden that I want to at least try to be done in a good 15 minutes. And so um, you guys pray with me as I try to uh, keep my word on that. But I do have something um, that the Lord um, had dropped in my spirit, and I hope that it blesses you tonight. Um, those of you who have your Bibles, um, please just uh, turn your attention to Hebrews. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. And I would like to read um, verse number one. <clears throat> and of course, the scripture says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. I'm going to read that scripture again one more time. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, I kind of wrestled a little bit with a particular subject or something that I could use to put all of this together. Um, but if I could give this a subject tonight, it would be hold it together hold it together. Um, one of the things that I believe I can speak on in regards to the times that we live in is that it is very important to know what you believe and why you believe what you believe. Um, we are in very challenging times and we know the scripture tells us and makes it clear to us that, uh, that we are in the last days. We are in perilous times. And the Bible tells us to uh, look up for your redemption draw of nine. And, of course, the Bible begins to tell us about many things that should take place as far as rumors of wars and how the Bible tells us, I believe, is in Timothy's writings where it tells us men should become lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemous, disobedient, disobedient to parents, thankful, unholy, without natural affection. Uh, false accusers and despises of those that are good and becoming lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. And of course, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers, 
the rulers of darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. So we understand that with all these things going on, the devil is raising his ugly head. And we know that in these type of times is very trying for us. And we know the Bible tells us that the trying of your faith worketh for patience. But we have to know what we, we have to know why we believe these things, because now more than ever before, the question of who God is has really became more to the forefront. Um, we see now um, when we we see now when you look at what's going on in the world, people are really seeking for an answer in regards to what it is to COVID. And one thing that we have to say to people, is, of course, us that's in the body of Christ, we understand that um, this is just a sign of the time and that it's important for us to gird up our loins and to get right with God. But through all of that, um, through all of that, when we read the scripture where it says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, there are a few things that we have to uh, break down or to gain understanding of in regards to uh, the scripture. We hear it all the time in church. We hear it preached, teach, hollered at us. We hear it, you know, through Sunday school, vacation Bible studies, things of that nature. But to me, this scripture has became more alive to me now than ever before, because when you says now is now faith is the substance well first thing we have to get understanding of is what is faith um when you look at the word faith the word faith means complete trust or confidence in someone or something anytime when you um have faith in something you consider you consider it to be reliable you consider it to be trustworthy you consider it to be something that you can lean on or depend on when you look at the word substance, the word substance, of course, can be used in different ways and it has a few different meanings. Um, when you look at the word substance, it talks about um, the meaning of it has the most important or essential part of something. Um, it also has a meaning of the quality of something being solid or dependable or stable. And when you look at our walk with God, our faith is something that must be uh, dependable. It must be something that we have complete confidence in. And the reason why that's very important to us, because if we don't have faith, then what do we have? The Bible, of course, makes it clear to us that it's impossible to please God without faith. And the Bible also tells us, uh, I believe is in, in that same chapter in Hebrews later on, it says, in, but without faith it is impossible to please him for he, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Well, the thing that we have to also understand in regards of when it comes down to the world, part of the reasoning of why people do not come to God is because they don't know who he is. And that comes on us as people. That comes on us as people, us as saints of God. For the, if the Bible says, for they that come to God must believe that he is God. Well, we also have to break down why should people believe in God in the first place, which then could bring into question those of us who, of course, are born again of the water and the spirit. How are we dedicating our lives to Christ? How are we living? The Bible tells us, of course, in Romans 10 and 17, um, it says, so faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But when we read that same particular passage of scripture, we find that it is stated, and I'm just going to read, of course, a few verses. Uh, starting at the 13th verse, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him of whom they not believe? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Which means in order for in order for faith to be in order for faith to come about, these words of life that we that we believe and live on, live on about, people have to hear those things. When people hearts people are, people's hearts are pricked when they hear the truth. Hear the truth. And so that's a part of our job when it comes down to when it comes down to people coming to God, that 
he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. And a lot of us may never receive all the rewards that we are supposed to have from God because we're not diligent. I don't know about anyone else, but I can't afford to miss any blessings that God has for me. If I, that God has for me or God has ordained for my life because I've chosen to be inconsistent. I've chosen not to be persistent. And so when we read this text again, and we see that when we understand what faith and substance is, it tells us that it is the evidence of things not seen. I was speaking to someone recently and I told them that, of course, when the scripture tells us that it's impossible to please God without faith, the Bible, one thing that I told someone recently, when we read the Bible, I believe it's in the Old Testament where it says, write the vision and to make it plain. Well, the Bible also tells us without, the, without a vision, the people perish. I told someone, I said, what faith does, I said, what faith does gives you the vision. Because hope and faith works together. When I have hope, it allows my faith to be activated because now I believe that there's something to look forward to. So faith gives me the vision. But then there's also another scripture in the Bible that sp speaks to us and says, faith without works is dead. So faith gives me the vision, but works give me the visual. So that means anything that you look forward to God to do, there are works on your behalf. There's works on your behalf. Of course, um, I'm reminded of an instance um, where Jesus, where well, there was a guy who came to the Lord and the Bible tells us that um, I believe his son had his son was sick or he came on the behalf of somebody. And the Bible tells us that the Lord, he said, Lord, I believe, but I don't believe that I'm worthy to be in that presence. I don't believe that I'm worthy to be in that in that eyesight. And he just says, if you could come, come to my house or come to where he is, I believe he'll make it. I believe he'll be all right. And then he changed his words and he said, well, Lord, if you can just speak the word, if you just send forth the word, I, I believe that everything would change. Everything would be all right. And the Lord spoke to him and said, according to your faith, so it be unto you. Now, when you sit there and consider that text or you consider what happened in that instance, God was so impressed or so moved by his faith. He says, by the time you get home or by the time you get back where you came from, it's going to be well with you. It's going to be well with you. Now, you have to realize that this man hasn't even visually seen the change of what he was seeking God after. But he had so much faith that he just knew based on what he based on what he heard about Jesus and and perhaps what he's seen about Jesus. He just knew that. If I get to you, whether my whether I carry my physical and that's the, and that's the amazing thing, his physical, the physical need that he had wasn't even with him. The person he was going on behalf of wasn't even with him. He left it somewhere else. But when the same way he left it is not the same way he came back to it. And so what I want someone to realize and understand is that, you know, many of us have trials and tribulations that God, you know, uh, that we need God to move on. But one of the main questions God is asking many of us is where have you laid the circumstance or where have you laid the situation? Where, you, where have you laid the situation? You know, the Bible tells us, I believe it's in uh, Psalms, Psalms chapter number 33, uh, verses eight through nine. The Bible tells us, let all the earth fear the Lord. Then it says, let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. Then the verse, then the Bible speaks on and says, for he spake and it was done and command and it stood fast. Now, what I want us to understand when, when we read this particular uh, verse in Psalms, what the Bible is stating is, is that, of course, of course, is a commandment from us to fear the Lord. That's, you know, in order for you to uh, truly please God and to walk up rightly before him, you have to fear the Lord. But. The reason why in this particular text, he's telling us to fear him is because before we even came into existence, he was. And so it says in the in, in the ninth verse, he says, well, he spake it and it was done in command and it stood fast. This is where, you know, our faith thing comes in again, because. When you read this, when you read the book of Job, the Bible talks about how there wasn't, you know, in Job's life, he had 
everything was going well for him. And we know the Bible tells us that uh, Satan was roaming around in the earth, or that's what he told the Lord, at least. And the Bible tells us that he, um, the Lord saw where he was um, roaming in the earth. And the Bible says that uh, the Lord speaks to uh, Satan and says to him, have you considered my servant Job? Because he knew that he wanted to attack Job. But to fast forward, um, when Job was going through his situations and problems, um, there was many, you know, people around him that began to question why, you know, uh, why is this happening to you? We know that the Bible talks about how uh, when we look at his wife, um, his wife got so weighed down with the circumstance and the issues where she told him to curse God and die. And hearing all of these things, it got Job down to a point where he began to really question God. And when we go to um, Job uh, chapter number 38, I'm just going to read a few verses there. Um, Job chapter number 38. Um, you can turn there with me if you like, but I'm just going to read a few verses. Um, the Bible says that the Lord answers Job out of a whirlwind and says, and in other words, God speaks, I believe God is speaking out of anger now because he says, who is this that darker who darkeneth counsel words without knowledge? Then he says, gird up now thy loins like a man, for I would demand of thee and answer thou me. He says, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth, declared if thou hast understanding, who have laid the measurements thereof, if thou knowest, or have stretched the line upon it? Whereupon are the foundations thereof a fastened, or who have laid the cornerstone thereof? When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut up the sea when the doors when it break forth as if it had an issue out of the womb. When you keep reading throughout this whole chapter in Job uh, chapter 38, God is bringing in the question of Job where, where were you when I caused all of these things to come into existence? I know that you're in an uncomfortable circumstance or situation right now, but where were you when I said, let there be and there was? And there was. And so that's where many of us in our personal walk with God um, in our personal walk with God, we are bringing in the question where. Lord, I understand how I ought to address you, but my circumstance is causing me to question who you are, who you are and what God is saying, you know. What God is saying to us in, in this situation is that, where were you? When I formed you in the belly of, belly of your mother's womb, where were you? When I orchestrated your whole entire life, where were you? Where were you? And the Bible, when we read these things, of course, the Bible lets us know in um, Matthew. It tells us that... Um, Matthew chapter 17, verse 20, it says, and Jesus said unto them, because of your unbelief, for, I ver for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, ye shall say unto these mountains, remove, hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. I say all these things to, I say all these things to say to us, those, those who are listening tonight, that if many of us are having challenges with the problem, if many of us are having challenges with just the mountains, then what are we going to do when the valleys come? And I say this because the Bible tells us when Jesus said that thou have faith of a grain of a mustard seed. If you ever seen a mustard seed, it's literally like this. Like it can literally fit right here where my index and my thumb is. And when I read that now, more than ever, that scripture becomes, in a sense, like prophetic to me, because it's like Jesus was stating that if you was going to have trouble with having. He, notice what he says, if you have faith of a grain of a mother seed. You can speak to a mountain and say, be thou removed. So then the other questions begin to come to my mind is if I just need that much for a mountain, 
then how much more do I need for valley or how much less in a sense do I need for some of the other problems and circumstances that I bring to God? Because the Bible tells us to cast all of our cares upon him for he careth for us. The other thing, when you read this same, when you read this same scripture in another text in Luke's gospel, he says, and the Lord said, if you have faith as a grain of a, <clears throat> if you have faith a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamine tree, be thou plucked by the root and be thou planted in the sea and it shall obey you. Now, as I was looking up what that was, um, this type of tree, it's another form, another way of saying a fig tree. A fig tree. Now, when I begin to look up and to try to see um, uh, what was what was a sacrament tree was or what did it represent, it tells me that it represents strength. It represents protection. It represents eternity or represents divinity. And so this is why it's important for us to hold it together because your faith is, is, is a part of your identity is part of your identification in Christ. If people cannot identify you by your faith, then what can they identify you by? Because it was through by faith. Bible tells us, is this through faith? Are we saved through faith and not of ourselves? And it is the gift of God. So it took faith for us to get to where we are in Christ. And it's going to take faith to foresee us to where we're supposed to be in Christ. All of the promises, of course, that the scripture says of God are yea and amen. But we're not going to be able to walk into those promises if we're, if we're missing, if we're missing faith. If we're missing faith, but he says it could be plucked up by the root and be and thou planted it in the sea and it shall obey you. And it says that it represents or symbolizes strength. Now, as I was stating earlier, when I looked up what was some of the reasonings of uh, why these particular trees, uh, what was this particular tree mean or what did it represent? Of course, I stated strength, protection. But when I looked at some of the uses of this tree, it talked about how some back in the, those times and days would use it uh, for furniture. But then I also seen where there was some bad things that were stated about the particular tree. Um, they will talk about how some of those trees um, would kill other roots or how it would um, have some, some maple light -like leaves that would fall from it. Maybe like leaves that would fall from it and how there was many that would find things that were uh, poisonous like on the tree. And so I begin to think, well, I begin to think to myself, well, what is it that some of us got rooted in our faith that poisoned us? That caused our faith not to be on a high level like it used to be. What could have stirred or shook our faith where I don't believe God as strong as I used to? What caused me to not see God to God like I used to? Like I used to. And so what my and so what I want some of us to understand tonight is that your faith is important. Your faith is important. When you read when you read one of these other verses that I had read, um, I believe it was right in the same chapter of St. Matthew, chapter number 17. Um, read a few verses for you there. When I read, when I read to you earlier in regards of the mustard seed faith, this is another example of why faith is so important to you. Because it was in that same chapter. It was in that same chapter. Where there was a man 
that um, there was a man. The Bible says in Matthew 17, verse um, 14, and it says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed. For oftentimes he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus gets a little upset with his disciples and says, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And the Bible tells us that, of course, he rebukes the devil and, the, and he departs from him. And the Bible says that he was cured from the illness or the, the situation that he was in that very hour. And, of course, the disciples bring into question, Master, why couldn't we do that? And the Bible tells us, as I stated, he says, you know, if you have the faith of a grain of a mother's seed, he says, you can speak to the mountain, says, be thou removed. But then he also speaks to them another very viable lesson. He says, how be it this kind go of not out, but by prayer and by fasting. There are some things, there are some things that's going to take more. That's going to take more than just, you know, I believe God. It's going to take more than just I believe God. You're going to have to really work on your faith. And so another thing that you find in that same particular text is that the man, in a sense, complains to God or complains to Jesus and says, I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cast him out. There are. He's quite upset about this because, Lord, these master, these people that claim to be your followers or your disciples are supposed to be followers of you. But they're miss. But they are. But they're not representing you like they should, because the same power that you have and the authority that you have, you've given them. But they wasn't able to act out what you've commanded them to go do. And this is where. Sometimes people's faiths are shooken because those of us who walk around with the power of God are not able to tap into the power of God like we should. Like we should. It was in one writing. It was in one of the writings of the epistles where um, it was in one of the writings of one of the epistles where um, I believe it was the Apostle Paul. Um, he was saying, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine, therefore, let us, you know, Move on. Um, and if I could uh, just expound on that scripture and if I could get that for you, um, get that for you um, very quickly. I just want to bring another key point to us. It's in Hebrews. And chapter number six, he was saying uh, Hebrews chapter number six, verse number one. And he says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on, go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrines of baptism and laying on the hands and resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. Now, one of the what he's saying is one of the foundational things of our walk with God is faith. There should be other things now that we should be progressing towards in the kingdom. But we can't. Because. The things that we should be already on one accord with, we struggle with. We struggle with. So he's saying. Therefore, of course, this is why he says in verse number three, he says, and this we will do if God permits. If we can, if we can just get past this with God's help, with God's grace, that's what he's implying. We'll be able to do this if God permits. But this is this is this is this is an us thing as well. We'll move on if God permits. 
And one thing that I begin to, and I'm, and I'm closing soon because my time is moving and I'm closing soon. But one of the things that I begin to think about as I was reading some of these scriptures this afternoon was there are some miracles that is more common in other parts of the world than us because they have nothing else to look forward to. Some people in some other countries don't have the luxuries that we have. And that is why certain miracle signs and wonders happen over there with them that doesn't happen over here with us. Because some, some people's environments are, are less fortunate, if I could say that. But there are certain things that happen over there that is not common to us. Now, uh, the Bible also tells us that, you know, if you ask anything in my name, you know, I will give it to thee. I would I would do it. But I would also say that there is some experience that that causes us to be able to birth or to grow a new level in faith or, or a high vein where we can be able to cause certain things to take place. And I dare believe that's where God is trying to get a lot of us to reach at, because um, any miracle that we read in the Bible should not be an uncommon thing of our day and time. No matter if it happens less because there's less people in that situation. No matter what we read in the scripture, whatever God healed or delivered somebody from, that should not be an uncommon thing for us. Seeing someone eyes open, seeing the lame walk, seeing the deaf hear, seeing the dumb talk. None of these things should be an uncommon thing for us to see. But the reason why it doesn't happen is because it's part of the same reason why it's the same reason why Jesus had to rebuke his disciples. He says, oh, faithless generation. How long shall I be with you? And you have to hold on to what you know. And we, one of your first, one of your first things that's going to cause you to immediately believe God, or if you never believed God before, is due by your salvation experience. Because it took faith for you to know, for you to experience the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Not just that, but it took faith for you to know that through by the, baptism in jesus name i didn't see my sins physically removed but they were removed in the watery grave but once you got the infilling of the holy ghost you knew then that the words the words of god became life because now i have a testimony that i took the scriptures literal as what they was written and as what it said and it came to pass and it came to pass and so what god is trying to get us to see is that the same way that i moved in that the same way I moved in salvation is the same way that I can move in the rest of your circumstances. In the rest of your circumstances. Reading again, and as I stated, I'm closing, in Hebrews chapter 11. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Then skipping down, it says in verse number three, it says, through faith we understand that the world's that the words were framed by the word of God so that things which are not so things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And this is the reason why I, re I read Psalms 33, because everything came into an existence when it came down to God just for speaking the words. We didn't see when all these things came to pass, but it came to pass. When we look at Noah's day. They never saw it rain, but he went off a word. He went off with just what he heard. And this is why it's important to remind yourself daily that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And in that it's impossible to please God without faith. Faith is your identity in Christ. This is why David was able to testify, I will take to see that the Lord is good and blesses the man that trusteth in him. You won't get the blessing if you don't trust in him. That's why he said, blessed is the man, which means that there's not there's not many people that trust in him. There's not many people that's going to get surpassed the point of what I'm stating. It sounds good in church of your course, you know, 
uh, when we test see, when we say it in testimony service, but when you really get to that place in that point where you can say that I taste and seen that the Lord is good. Now I can pass on and tell other folk, blessed is the man. In other words, blessing is the person that gives God a try. Blessed is the person, I say it again, blessed is the person that gives God a try. And so I want to say again to those that are listening tonight and those that will perhaps come across this to hold it together. Hold your faith together. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I say this again and I'm long and I'm getting off. Faith allows you to get the vision, but works give you the visual. Whatever you're looking for God to do, as the scripture says, write the vision and make it plain. But remember, there's works that come behind what you want God to do. And that's all I have for you tonight. God bless you.